Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? So it's seven o'clock and we would like to start the program. Uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Tomomi from Tokyo, Japan. I'm your host for tonight. So thanks for making the time on your precious uh, last day of the long weekend. This is the first session of the three-day webinar series uh, supported by the Embassy of Japan. Tonight is the first session focusing on the Minoyaki pottery from Gifu. I hope you are able to see the screen that I'm sharing. Reiko, please allow me if you're not seeing. Yeah, so um, just a few housekeeping issues before we start the program. I'm sure that you have become a Zoom specialist by now, but just to alert you that this session would be recorded, but only the main speaker and the presentation. So we are expecting about 500 people to join. So we're not gonna film the gallery view of the audience. And please send your comments and questions through the chat box. We'll have a time to address those questions later in the session. Also, if time allows, we plan to uh, dedicate some moment uh, to be with the real artists, kilo masters, and uh, those people connecting from Japan, actually. It's about nine o'clock in the morning uh, on Tuesday uh, in Japan. We are uh, having a lot of artists connected from there. So we might have that session after the main session. That one would not be recorded. So feel free to speak up to ask your questions. So we have a busy night ahead of us. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, first, we would have some opening remarks from the Japanese government representatives. Uh, the first one, Ms. Yuko Kaifu, the president of Japan House in Los Angeles. Ms. Kaifu, could you give us a few words, please? The floor is yours. Thank you, Tomoe-san, for your introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Yuko Kaifu, and I'm the president of Japan House Los Angeles. It is a great pleasure for us to be part of this exciting program today. For those of you who don't know much about Japan House, let me talk a little bit about who we are. Uh, please direct your attention to the screen as we are showing some of the images of our facilities. Japan House is a public diplomacy initiative launched by the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Japan in 2016 to showcase various aspects and the best of Japan. There are three Japan Houses in the world, in London, Sao Paulo, and Los Angeles. Obviously, we're the only one in North America. We are located in Hollywood in California. And as you can see in the, on the screen, we have a gallery, library, event hall, and spaces for restaurant and shop. Unfortunately, under the COVID-19 pandemic, our facilities are currently closed, but we have been carrying out many online programs, including a virtual tour of the exhibitions on our website. I'm happy to announce that we have just started today the virtual tour of our new exhibition, Nature Supernature, which features Japan's woodblock prints in the Edo and Meiji periods. Please be, visit our website, japanhouselay.com. I'm personally looking forward so much to today's webinar as Gifu Prefecture is so rich in culture and natural beauty. And it's not only renowned for Minoyaki pottery, but it's also known to be a great sake producer. It is true that good sake ware improves the taste and aroma of sake, and it'd be exciting to learn about it. When Japan House Los Angeles reopened its event hall after the pandemic, we love to do sake tasting with Minoyaki pottery sake ware uh, and with, uh, uh, with tasty sake, and I uh, hope that you would join us then. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ms. Kaifu. Now we'll have an overview of Gifu 
the counselor for the economic affairs for the embassy of Japan, Mr. Shigemi Ando, who tell you about the charm and beauty of Gifu Prefecture. So over to you, Councilor Ando. Uh, thank you very much, Miyajima-san, for your kind introduction and the hard work for tonight, you and your team of Tokyo. And thank you very much, Kaifu-san, a wonderful opening remarks and your promotion uh, of this event, especially in the uh, west coast of the United States. And I would like to also express my sincere gratitude to the people who support this event tonight, especially uh, the government of Gifu Prefecture, Toki City and Totoki, and masters and artists of Minoyaki. Thank you very much. And I was born and brought up in Gifu Prefecture uh, almost half a century ago. And after I entered into the foreign service of Japan, it has been my honor and duty to speak for my country, Japan. But tonight, uh, my fellow citizens of Japan outside of the pre prefecture, please forgive my negligence, even though I speak only the beauty and charm of the prefecture. And my friends of Gifu, uh, please forgive my negligence, even though I do not speak enough the charm and the beauty of the prefecture. Uh, but don't worry, uh, very kindly, the government of Gifu prefecture uh, allows me to use the beautiful photo of Gifu. And my colleague, Ida-san, prepares the nice presentation for PowerPoint. Here it is. The location of Gifu Prefecture, it is located in the middle of Japan between Tokyo and Kyoto. And the <coughs> gratitude of Gif, uh, the <coughs> geographical diversity and nature is very remarkable. Uh, from the upper right to the lower left, the altitude of land is gradually decreasing. Uh, I can't see now, but uh, in the upper right area, there are several mountains, uh, more than 10,000 feet. But uh, in the lower left area, three large rivers combined together. There are some places uh, below the height of the sea. And the nature and geography are diverse and very beautiful, like these photos. And especially in the northern part, there are several villages uh, located from others and preserve the unique tradition and culture a long time. I will refer later the Shirakawa Go and the Takayama area. Uh, but before that, have you ever heard of the Yurukela in Japanese? A uh, Yurukela, a unique uh, mascot character of Japan. Uh, very cute and not so, how to say, uh, so decorated, but very popular today. And I believe this is one of the most old, oldest uh, yurukela in Japan, Sarubobo, uh, which means the babies of monkey. Uh, they are originally the charm for good fortune long time ago in northern area of Gifu Prefecture. But almost 40 years ago, young trainers successfully transformed them into the symbol of new tourism in Gifu Prefecture, especially the northern part. And the next one is the photos of Shirakawa Go. Here is another isolated village of Gifu Prefecture. You can see the photos of the harmony of the human craft and the beautiful nature. <clears throat> These unique shape of buildings has developed a long time to preserve itself from the heavy snow during the cold season. And inside of the building, because of this unique structure, here are huge space. And today they are assigned the World Heritage of UNESCO. Here are another image of Gif Prefecture, uh, Nakasendo. Uh, which is a kind of uh, interstate highway 
of the pre-modern era of Japan. And even today, you can enjoy the nice hiking along the route. Yeah, like this. And along the route, like today's highway, there are several service stations. And here, the right picture, one of the service stations is preserved today, and you can enjoy. Owing to such beautiful nature and diverse geography, crafting industries have developed in the prefecture a long time. <clears throat> the <clears throat> hand-making paper craft is probably one of the most ancient ones. <clears throat> and the Siki blaze are also very famous. Originally, uh, Seki is famous, uh, the product land of the samurai sword. And even today, the craftsmanship of samurai sword is preserved like this. And before we enter into the presentation of Minoyaki, I hope you have some image of beautiful nature and tradition of the Kifu. Thank you very much for your attention and my apology of the technical difficulties. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Ando, for such a gracious introduction of Gifu. Uh, okay, so. Uh, I'd like to move on to uh, tonight's presentation, focusing on Minoyaki. I hope you are able to see my presentation now. Okay. Yes, as Council Ando mentioned, there are so many things that Gifu could offer. And Gifu has four different regions inside the prefecture. And uh, I'd like to uh, introduce to the audience Minoyaki pottery, which is from the eastern region of Gifu. And I'm actually from that part of the uh, Gifu prefecture. I'm from Toki city. That's why I named my store Tokia. So that's the uh, largest producer of the Minoyaki pottery. Okay. Later in tonight's session, we'll have time to actually interact with Kilo masters and Japanese artists and potters. But just to give you the overview of what the Minoyaki is, uh, because I'm not sure if uh, many of you are already familiar with this kind of Japanese ceramic. So if I asked around my friends and colleagues working in this industry, what they think about Minoyaki, how would you define Minoyaki? and the ideas about this uh, large industry, most of them said something in common. Uh, Minoyaki is hard to define, but what came up so strongly is those three elements. So I'll just go quickly uh, one by one, what I think is the main characteristics of Minoyaki. So first, it has a very rich and long history and tradition. It dates back to the seventh century, uh, so what I'm showing here on those pictures are the historic site called Motoyashiki Gama in Toki city. This is the excavation site uh, that was discovered a few decades ago, but this proved that this region was one of the oldest uh, kilns in entire Japan. And then uh, uh, they found many artifacts and remains of the pottery from very, very long time ago. And so in the 1300 years of history, Minoyaki has evolved and has gone through many different phases. One of the notable ones are the, uh, during the 16th century, we call it Azuchi Momoyama Jidai. During that time when the tea ceremony culture has developed, Minoyaki region has provided uh, teaware and fancy utensils, and mostly for those uh, nobles like shogun and greatest tea masters. 
so most of the olive were, were developed around this time. And then uh, we have so many other phases in Minoyaki history, history, but the time is limited tonight. So I'm not gonna go over every single phase, but uh, yeah, if you're interested in hearing more about those uh, details, I'll have other seminars breaking down to all these different elements. So stay tuned, but for tonight, uh, for the, uh, the time's sake, I'll just move on. So the second uh, characteristics of Minoyaki is that uh, it's the largest producer of Japanese domestic pottery. So Gifu Prefecture, as you could see in this little uh, chart, it provides the largest share of uh, domestically produced pottery and ceramic art in Japan. It has been declining slowly in the past few decades, but we still make the top share in entire Japan for producing domestic ceramic ware. Here is the map of locally produced pottery all across Japanese island. Uh, we call it something yaki. Yaki means to fire or some sort of ware, like teaware, sakeware, or tableware. Since I also deliver some online lessons to local schools in DC, Virginia areas, sometimes I use those slides because some of the students are actually studying Japanese and they wanted some exposure to Japanese contents, but so allow me to just show it as it is. But my point is that uh, Japan as such a little island, it has lots of unique pottery making in each region. So Gifu is located in the very middle of this main island of Japan, but uh, maybe you are familiar with other like Arita or Bizen or Kutani, other sorts of something yaki from Japan, but the Minoyaki is the one of the oldest and the largest producer of Japanese pottery. So the third characteristics is the diversity and inclusion. So Minoyaki is known to be like anybody and everybody. So unlike other pottery like Arita or Abizen who has a very distinctive design and styles and shapes and colors, Minoyaki can do anything and everything, you know, from the high end uh, unique art materials to a daily use, very uh, used at the common household, uh, very approachable, accessible, uh, reasonable priced. And then the design wise as well, uh, from the very historic traditional motif to a very modern Western kind of design. So it's known to be a like, producer of a diverse set of pottery, not just limited to one specific design or color, so that's the another characteristics of Minoyaki. And um, in case you're wondering, yes, it's also available in the US. Maybe you don't know, but most of the Japanese restaurants or even Asian restaurants, they actually use a lot of pottery from Minoyaki. It's just, it's not advertised or promoted that way, but without you knowing, <laughs> you are actually using a lot of them because I know that there is a distributor widely uh, active in the US. I'm not sure how many of you are uh, ceramic artists yourself or potters who practice you know, pottery making. Uh, a lot of uh, friends and customers who come to Tokyo, Japan, they are actually uh, ceramists themselves. So some of them are familiar with all these steps involved in making one cup or one plate it's quite complex and you know it takes a lot of effort just to produce one or two bowls or plates but we don't have time to go into each step but um just wanted to show that it takes a lot of effort so many steps to go through to create one good quality sakeware or tableware yeah so later in tonight's webinar, we'll have a chance to actually visit those Japanese potter's kilns and then take a, a glance at how they work at each step. So just wanted to uh, provide the pre preview of that. So that's 
the really uh, short version of overview of Minoyaki, but we'll come back. So please keep sending your comments and questions. Uh, we'll have some segment to answer your questions. Sorry for the rush, but bear with me. So Kagoha-san, could you come up? Hi. Onegaishimasu. Hi. Konbanwa. So Kagoha san, I'm sure, I hope you would be able to see his face. Uh, he is the um, sort of descendant of a very renowned family in Toki city. It has 18th generations of history doing business in Dachi in Toki city. And he's a leader of this um, Totoki, the one of the most notable public private partnership initiative in Turkey. So he's going to talk about what we are doing. I'm actually part of this effort. So Kagoha san, if you could provide some overview what we are doing through Totoki. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for interest in Minoyaki and for joining us while you are so busy. My name is Ryosuke Kagohashi. I ran porcelain factory in Dachicho, Toki city. I'm working in the organization called Totoki with people in there, 30 to 50, who are involved in the production of Minoyaki and thinking about the future. This organization also includes clay factory, mold factory, glaze factory, wholesale company, and so on. In Minoyaki, which consists of division of labor, it is very difficult for any company to survive alone. So the organization that connects these warp and weft threads was necessary. Weft only connections have existed in the past in the form of union. But in these days, this union has become a completely non-functional. Since 10 years ago, Totoki has set up for discussion every month about the future, making a booklet called Premium Book and holding lectures. Above all, we planned raw fish, which was planned for visitors are uh, able to see the real factories. Why we call raw factory? Because Japanese like uh, raw fish and like to eat uh, raw fish very much. <laughs> However, it is difficult to continue in COVID-19. So we switch to the activity where you can tour the factory using SNS called work trip and continuing. By carrying out the, this activity in a vertical and horizontal connection, we believe that bonds are stronger and we will be able to connect with an eye on the future, even in real business. In this valley of Mino, there is a history of 1300 years and more than 300 manufacturers. And it is one of the leading ceramic production area in the world. So we believe that protecting this pro production area is to protect our company. In the future, we would like to create the organization where craftsmen, artists, restaurant, and other industry can participate and make it a fun production area. Thank you for your attention. Sorry. Okay. Thank you so much, Kagoha san. I forgot to mention that this segment was actually supported by. Uh, are you seeing the slide? Is this what you are seeing? Okay. This segment was uh, strongly supported by Toki City, Toki Municipal Institute of Ceramics. 
I'm omitting all these prefix and suffix because uh, I know that they have already earned a PhD or two or even the, the third kind of uh, prefix in the making of Minoyaki pottery. But uh, we have special thanks to Yoshihiro Ogawa, Ryo Kumazaki, Shigeo Mizutani. They have been up all night uh, providing data and numbers and all the information that I needed to put this presentation together. So thank you so much. And this is the group picture of Totoki from our last meeting. Uh, we have actually many more other members, but uh, uh, just showing a few here. But thanks so much, Kagohashi-san. It's been a very wonderful uh, partnership. So the highlight of the webinar tonight, because I own a little shop in DC dealing with Minoyaki, specializing in this ceramic art from Japan. People are actually asking, what, who are those people who are making those beautiful pottery? And then uh, you don't really get to see those people actually making those beautiful products. So I just wanted to connect with you, uh, with the real, Kilum masters and craftsmen and artists actually connected from Japan live today. As I mentioned earlier, there are so many steps that are involved in making one little cup or a simple plate. This is my apologies, this is another Japanese slide, but maybe I assume that some of you in the audience would be able to read some of it, at least some hiragana part. Uh, you would be, you should be proud of yourself. But anyway, this is the um, slide created by the Toki City uh, for the education of children. I actually use this to deliver uh, lessons to the local schools in DC uh, when I teach about the Japanese ceramic art and Minoyaki pottery. So this is the flow of the production of Minoyaki, starting from you know taking the clay from the mountains and then processing it to be ready to be used for the products. And then uh, all these people and specialists involved in just creating one pottery. So none of them are disposable. We, we need all of them, but it's just a, a really uh, small business involved in each one of those steps. So, sorry. So from here, we'll get into the workplace of all these specialists place, starting with the clay making. Uh, we have some of the uh, live footage from those workshops and studios and kilun. So let's begin our virtual tour of those Japanese kilns. Chris, could you start the video, please?僕たちはあの陶磁器用の粘土を作ってるわけですけど、あの原料になる粘土っていうのは鉱山から入ってきます。僕たちはそれをあの試験をしながら均質なものにして、メーカーさんだったり、家物さんに届きます。その都度変わ
So thank you. So Chris, let's get into the next workplace, which is the chaos modeling. とりあえず今は片屋さんがどんどん本当に高齢化が進んでいて、えー、もう本当に実際若い人たちでももう50歳以下で10件を切ってきている状況なのでこれをどうにか少しでも若い世代に伝えていくために、えー、といろんな活動をしていますで、まあ、工場を開けてオープンファクトリーみたいなことをして。えー、と型の作り方を知ってもらう型屋さんを知ってもらうっていう活動に力を今は入れていますこれからも型屋さんのことをもっと知ってもらえるように頑張っていきたいと思いますA molding company. He's the second generation of the business and he has、uh, lots of workshops for the children to pass the tradition to the next generation. So, coming up next is the glazing, one of the most interesting、uh, workplaces. So, let's come take a look. まあ、お客さんで使っている土も赤いものからもう本当に真っ白なものまであって、まあ、釜の温度も本当1200度から1330ぐらいまで幅があるんで、まあ、なかなかその溶け具合と表情と色が合ってこないさらに500種類ぐらいの中からピックアップして全部テストしていくんで合わせるのもなかなか難しいんですけどやっぱりこの会った時のサプライズ感というか。もう自分が思っているよりもいい色が出る場合も全然あるんでそこがやっぱりやっとって面白いところかなと思いますありがとうございます。It's like,、uh, it looks very wild. It just looks like a bunch of suns and clay. But when he makes it, just creating some recipes, you know, it makes a whole difference. Even the slightest changes in the formula that can totally change the finishing、uh, outcome. So that's sort of magical. So thank you. So the next place, let's take a look. もともとうちが大量生産向けのものづくりをしててそこ,こからうちの先代が今のいわゆる土のぬくもりが伝わるあの手作りのものっていうので今の陶器の商品に変わりましてそれで自分もそれを受け継いでやっているんですけどもやっぱ一個一個生地を作るところから自分で手で削って加食してお客様の方に届けるっていうところまあ全部携われるそういう子がいいですし。やっぱこだわりとしては使っていただくお客様がもう少しこの口元が柔らかくなっていれば口当たりはいいのになとかそれに合わせてこちらも加食を加えれたりとかあのニーズに合わせたものづくりができるっていうのが今のうちが大切にしていることです。Thank you. That was Kazuaki Tanaka from Shinkoga Makaneta Tanaka Seitojo. His company was founded in 1895, which is quite a history, and he's dedicated to the quality of his work, all the personalized touches in each one of his products. So that was great. And The last one from our Totoki members. Let's move on and take a look. Mino Eki, this is 
まあ多様性があるってことでやっぱりいろいろあるけど何にもないって言われているようなんですけど形になっているってことは誰かが何かしたいとかやっぱりそういうのがあの思いとか考えが形になっているのでやっぱそれをやっぱりどうつなげていくかそういう表現の仕方っていうのがねやっぱりそこをうまくやっていってそれをやっぱり発信し続けないとそれを続けることによってやっぱりみんなに認知していただいてそれがこの先もまだつながっていくんじゃないかなとやっぱり止まっててはいけないと思いますやっぱりやり続ける頑張り続ける頑張ります Thank you. That was Toshitaka Koketsu from Maruri Tamagiri Kizo Shoten. His workplace is one of the largest businesses in this industry, and the whole logistics and processes involved in making and producing and distributing and selling pottery. His company does that all. So, thanks for coming with us tonight. The next one, I would like to visit. The next city from Toki, this entire region is the producer of Minoyaki, not just Toki city. So, and then、uh, his company actually specializes some of the sake ware and a very well known family, which is actually、um, founding members of the Sakazuki Museum in Tajimi. Sakazuki is a sake cup, the little one. And then that museum actually showcases some of the most renowned national living treasure uh, uh, that was born and raised in this region. And his company was actually founded in 1887. So let's take a look at the next video. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the changing colors of all these little sake cups. That's quite amazing. It's fascinating. He、uh, had all these ideas and he keeps sending me all these pictures and videos of new products. They're always up for a new challenge and it's a beautiful product. So thank you. That was from Marumo Takagi Toki.、Uh, the CEO is Masaharu Takagi. So the next one. Could we move on and take a look? Now, in the world, there is a lot of people who are in the world. So, in the world, there is a lot of people who are in the world. So, in the world, there is a lot of people who are in the world. そういったものを、えー、感じながら、えー、ほっとしていただけるようなリラックスした時間をあの感じていただけたらなと思っております。Thank you. That is Taketo Hayashi, our beloved featured artist. His work has been very popular and so many people. Go after him, and here is the one that he was just creating in the video, which just arrived. Thanks to Mikai chan for sending this on time. Yeah, so as you could tell, there are so many steps involved in making those little cups, the olive sake cup that we showed through those videos, and mug cup, and other sake ware, you name it. So, Minoyaki can produce so many different things, so many different styles. 
and all are beautiful. So thanks for joining this virtual tour of the kilns and workplaces of those Minoyaki specialists. Let me share my screen again. Let's see. Sorry, I'm a bit clumsy. Okay. So please keep sending comments and questions through the chat box. I hope you got inspired by all these videos. And they are actually connected. So those are the pictures of the people that appeared in the video. And yeah, of course, we have a lot more, a lot more kilns and actual potters and artists. Sorry, the time was limited. So I was only able to show just a few of them, but stay tuned and you would have more chance to uh, go visit them. And hopefully when the time is right and if it's safe to travel, I hope you visit Toki, Tajibi and Gifu someday soon to meet with those artists. So the segment of Minoyaki and virtual tour of those kilns, although they are actually connected live from Japan, uh, uh, those segments are over at the moment. But next, since the main theme of, of this whole three-day webinar is about Japanese sake and sakeware, I would like to move on to the next segment, which is to introduce some local sakes from Gifu Prefecture. So we have tonight is Mr. Rentaro Ida, uh, Japan Sommelier Association Sake Diploma International. He uh, uh, recently earned this very challenging diploma among many other titles and credentials and certificate in the area of sake, uh, shochu and wine. He has earned this very precious one recently, and he's here with us tonight to introduce you to some of the local sakis. So over to you, Ben San. Thank you so much, Tomomi san, uh, for your kind introduction. Uh, let me share my screen. So um, I'm involved in a sake PR uh, business at the embassy. Um, sake is my passion. It's my pleasure to talk to you a little bit about sake uh, in Gifu. Can you see the screen or maybe not? Ah, here you go. So um, hopefully uh, at the beginning of Council Ando's uh, presentation, uh, it was clear that the Gifu is very uh, mountainous uh, prefecture, uh, the Fugo Mountains. This mountain uh, gives sake brewers access to a very rich underground waters, uh, suitable for sake making. Relatedly, uh, there are so many beautiful rivers uh, in Gifu, which gives ideal condition for brewing sake. Gifu prefecture is actually pretty large. It is seventh largest uh, prefecture among the 47 prefectures in Japan. So it is hard to uh, talk about uh, one particular uh, characteristic of gift sake. But I'd say uh, generally speaking, uh, gift sake uh, is kind of a rich and full body type of sake uh, compared to uh, kind of light and refreshing sake uh, typical in Niigata and Tokoku region. So Upper North Mountain region is known for a very dry and earthy type of sake, uh, reflecting the fact that the area uh, historically did not have access to fresh uh, seafood. The lower plain of Mino area uh, reflects the overall characteristic of sake in central region of Japan, uh, which is uh, known as sweet and rich. Uh, this is typical uh, in Aichi and the Mie prefecture. Uh, the central area of Japan is known for its cuisine that use very thick uh, tamari shoyu and uh, rich uh, hacho miso and sake reflects uh, that kind of uh, cuisine in that area. There are so many uh, different kinds of sake in Gifu, uh, but for, for the sake of time, I have picked three different sake brands uh, from this region. Uh, you have learned uh, that uh, diversity is the key to understand minoyaki 
And I would like, I like to also uh, talk about how you can uh, play around with uh, pairing uh, those different type of sake with different type of aminoyaki sake wear. The first sake I'd like to talk about uh, is called uh, Shirakawa Go Sasanigori Junmai Ginjo. Uh, this is a cloudy type of sake called Nigori. Uh, during the fall season in Shirakawa Go, uh, there is a festival called uh, Doburoku Matsuri, where you can actually take your own sake wear and you can drink a very traditional style sake called Doburoku. This particular sake brewery, uh, Miwa Shuzo, which produced the Shirakawa Go Sasanigori, uh, has been providing raw materials for this, uh, for this festival. And they started selling a sake uh, similar to the one uh, that was served in the festival. So Nigori sake uh, is sweeter uh, than the regular sake uh, because of the sake leaves or sake or rice particle the floating in sake. As a result of that, uh, you can taste the rice flavor more directly. Uh, it's been, uh, it has a very rich and creamy texture. Uh, this one particular has a kind of hint of yogurty note. This type of complex complexity uh, gives sake ability to pair well with wide variety of food, uh, including anything using cheese uh, or greasy fried foods that is rich in flavor. So um, I'm, type of person who likes to uh, drink sake using the wine grass because you know uh, you, if you use the wine grass you can actually really appreciate the aroma uh, coming from the sake but uh, if you're drinking nigori style sake uh, this type of uh, wine grass does not actually work uh, because uh, the sake leaf will stick to the inside of grass and it doesn't necessarily look uh, pretty so i would actually recommend uh, using uh, this uh, kind of metallic looking uh, uh, katakuchi and uh, sakazuki. This color, I think, gives a nice contrast to a white color uh, of nigori. And uh, perhaps more importantly, the open shape of katakuchi as well as the flat shape of sakazuki will give you a good idea of what's going on with the liquid as time goes by. As you can imagine, uh, the sake li uh, will be settled out from the sake and uh, it's easy to see, you know, see this in the katakuchi than uh, you know, things like tokuri, which has a more narrower uh, opening. You can, uh, you know, if you see that, you can remix it uh, if you want, uh, but uh, you can actually enjoy the top clear layer of the uh, clear sake. Uh, that tastes really interesting as well. The second sake I'd like to talk about is called Tenryo uh, Hido, Hidahomare Junmai Ginjo. Uh, in a region of famous Gero Hot Spring Onsen uh, in the Northern Hida region. It is brewed with 100 local sake rice called Hidahomare, a special kind of rice made to be suitable for making premium sake. Some of you know, it is not always the case that the rice uh, used in sake brewing is grown in the same region uh, like wine. In fact, the vast majority of rice that is suitable for premium sake making called Yamada Nishiki uh, is grown in a particular area of Hyogo, western part of Japan. Uh, GIF Prefecture, the government of GIF Prefecture actually spent a lot of time to come up with this particular breed of, uh, breed of rice for making premium sake. This sake is brewed with 100 local rice and uh, it uses uh, underground water coming from the mountain of Hida. So if you really would, would like to appreciate the, uh, the sense of places uh, of Kifu uh, in sake, this is one of the best sake that you can buy out there. So this is a dry sake uh, with very short, present short finish, reflecting a characteristic of Nozan Gifu sake that I have talked about. Uh, you get fruity aroma uh, you typically get from Ginjo sake, uh, including type grapefruits, banana, and so forth. Uh, but the fruitiness is not so overwhelming. Uh, this makes this sake a very good uh, fruit pairing sake. I haven't tried this by myself, but uh, the people recommend uh, pairing this sake with Hidagyu, uh, the regional premium Wagyu, uh, Japanese beef, with lots of like wild plants uh, from the mountains. But this can of course go well with wide variety of food. You can drink sake with any kind of minoyaki, I think, but here I am recommending 
uh, this specially crafted uh, cup, uh, or maybe uh, this uh, very uh, cool looking green uh, You can also appreciate uh, this sake uh, warm or cold. Uh, you're generally advised not to warm uh, ginjo style fruity sake, but this type of uh, ginjo sake, Tenryo uh, Hidahomare, will actually really uh, go, stands out when it warms. The last sake that I would like to talk about is Dharma Masamune Koshu. The brewery is located in Gifu City, a capital of Gifu Prefecture in Southern Minu area. Uh, Dharma Masamune is uh, known as a brand uh, for premium aged sake. Uh, so as compared to wine, aging is not that common in, in the sake world, but experimenting with aging is becoming uh, trendy nowadays. This particular brewery has been doing, the, doing it uh, since 1972. They are unique in the sense that the vast majority of their sake is aged sake. This particular bottle is a blend of uh, 1972, 1979, 1991, and 1992 vintages. They actually use the table rice, not the sake uh, rice uh, for, this, for brewing this sake. And they also use a special uh, five-step uh, brewing process called uh, Godanjiko. This results in sake very rich in amino acid and sugar. So amino acid is a source of umami and the sugar of course is a source of sweetness. This brown color is actually a result of interactions between those amino acid and sugar called the Maillard re reaction. It has very complex aroma uh, from the aging. Uh, uh, so, you know, you get uh, caramel, soy sauce, uh, honey, black tea, nuts, and spice. It is a sweet sake, but sweetness is well balanced uh, with its acidity. It also has a hint of bitterness from the aging as well. Many sake uh, YouTuber nowadays is talking about this sake a lot in terms of food pairing. It goes well with salmon rolls, ikura, uh, grilled eel, unagi, and uh, spiced meat. It can go well with the various fruits as well. Last night, I tried it with the dark chocolate. Uh, it went pretty well as well. So in terms of sake wear, I'd like to suggest the white porcelain tokuri and ochoko to really appreciate the color, uh, brown color of this sake. So that's uh, uh, the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, as you can imagine, I have just scratched the surface of uh, sake in Gifu. There are over uh, 60 sake breweries currently brewing sake in Gifu. Every brewery is different. So maybe after the COVID uh, situation is over, uh, please consider visiting Gifu and enjoy the food and sake there. Before we can do that, let's enjoy drinking sake from Gifu Prefecture here in the United States. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kentaro san Thank you. It was great. I had a privilege joining his tasting session and really oh, it was so amazing. That was really something different from what I've tasted before. Even if I'm from Gifu Prefecture myself, I really didn't know that Gifu produces all these very unique sake locally. So it was really something very interesting. And as Rentarosa mentioned, those are all actually available in the US. So I think we should be able to share that kind of information as well. So, um, so please keep sending your questions if you haven't done so. Uh, let me share my screen. So we would now move on to, we are already close to eight o'clock. So I just wanted to leave some time for you to mingle with the real artists and Kilo Masters. So it's your time to write your questions and they are actually connected live. So while we are waiting for the questions to come, I just wanted to show the acknowledgement to all these people and the entities who significantly contributed to today's session. I really cannot thank them enough. And I really also thank each one of you who has been the big supporter of Japanese art and craftsmanship. So, and then uh, 
shortly uh, we will post some uh, post some link to the chat box about the survey uh, for you to provide feedback for this webinar but please keep sending your questions and okay let's take a look at all these questions thank you reiko for consolidating all these and thanks for sending all these excellent comments all right if if it's the hard question i'll just throw it to those kilo masters and potters themselves i'll go with the easy one uh, someone asked is japanese pottery microwavable yes most of them are durable and uh say for both microwave and dishwasher so feel free to put them there but not to the open uh, a lot of interest on the color changing sake cups and glasses those are available in the us uh, i i carry them as well so uh, if you check out my website you you may find the information uh, i'm in dc though but i can ship it to you uh, so let me pick this one and then throw it to Kagohashi-san. Are you still there? Yeah. Hi. Uh, when you mean specialized, each person does one technique, like an assembly line. So, あの、みのやきはすごい細分業、細分業化されてるって、それぞれの事業種がすごい専門的に違うことやってるって言うんですけど、本当に。あの、一人の人は一つのことしかできないんですかっていう、そのプロセスとして、あの、どうでしょうか。え、そうですね、もちろんです。で、うちの会社でも50人ほどいますが、え、同じ人が同じ作業だけっていうことになるべくならないようにはしてます。ありがとうございます。Thank you. So the answer is that uh so when I mentioned that Minoyaki is highly not divided but uh each entity specializes some specific activities in the whole supply chain or production chain of minoyaki production and distribution yes the office or the workshop or the kiln it does specialize something very specific but it doesn't mean that you as a worker are only engaged in one single job you, you have to do everything actually i visited many of those kilns and workplaces and then they are working so hard covering a whole wide range of activities and tasks so it's not like factory assembly line. So, yes, so that's the answer. But thanks for a great question. For the ceramic artists, do they only follow traditional forms and patterns or do they create their own styles as well? Thank you, this is another great question. This is exactly what Minoyaki is. So it's, it's, a, it's a really nice question. So, um, yeah, so I would say, as I sh I've shown in earlier in my uh, session, in my presentation, that Minoyaki is all about diversity. It can create so many different things. So um, we sort of thought we are losing the identity because it's not distinctive enough. It, because we can do so many different things and then it can be nobody. But that means that you, if you choose to uh, just pursue these very traditional, uh, very authentic uh, oribe, setoguro, shino, that kind of traditional work, just like uh, Taketo does. This is the shino sake bottle with the little sake cup. This is a beautiful shino that he specializes. You can choose to do that, the traditional styles and patterns, but also you can be more pop and uh, modern and whimsical 
more fashionable, you know, it can be anything. So uh, some of the key learns, I think I've shown early, I don't know how to go back to my presentation, so I, I don't want to mess up this moment, but so it actually they produced some Western style teacups and little uh, tableware. So the answer is that you can do both. You can choose to pursue the traditional forms and patterns, or, or you can totally explore new things. That's why uh, there are so many different artists living in Toki and Tajimi and Mino region. Uh, is Minoyaki usually mold ceramics? What about hand carved or wheel thrown ceramics that fall into the Minoyaki tradition? Who are some of your favorite younger female hand ceramists artists in Gifu? Thank you for another great question. Uh, yes, sorry if it was confusing when I showed you the video footage of all these different artists or the workplace or the specialists. Uh, some workplace, some uh, like family owned very small kilns. They just uh, specialize the hand carved, hand crafted pieces, just like Taketo does. But some other workshops, uh, they have like, uh, just like Kagohasan's place, which has some facility to do some sort of uh, larger scale production, but it's never be like industry or plastic. Uh, that's, the, that's the beauty of Minoyaki, that it's not like massive factory producing the same thing over and over again. They always add some personal finishing individual touches. So yes, some facilities have that kind of equipment that would enable you to produce at some sort of larger volume, but there are so many other uh, studios and workshops that really focus on every step done by hand. Uh, maybe Masakun, are you still there? I have a question for you. Masakun, Masaka? Maybe we lost him? Takagi san? Takagi san, shitsuma ga kitemasu. Unmute shite itadakemasu ka? Thank you. Sorry, he, he was not in the video, but here is the CEO of the Marumo Takagi-san, one of the largest companies and then the founding member of the Sakazuki Museum in Tajimi. He has, he's showing this beautiful showroom that I visited many times. So the question for you, あの、色が変わる杯は一体どうなってるんですかどんな秘密であんなことができるんですかあの、友ちゃん翻訳すいません。はい。冷たい温度で変化をするという仕掛けと熱い温度で変化をするという I think it's a company secret. So <laughs> we're not, not going to reveal the whole recipe or technique or science behind it. But what he was saying that the color changing material, it's, it's really a collaboration between all these companies that he supported. And then also it does react to not just to sake, but any other liquid. It reacts to the temperature of the liquid. Ocha demo in this, ocha demo, oyu demo. Yeah, any water or tea can change the color. And it's so pretty. I really enjoy it. And then I know that it was, it's it's so popular all across the world because we are stuck at home and we are always looking for new entertainment that we could do at home, you know. So it was massively, hugely popular. And I carry those. So if you're interested. <laughs> ありがとう。あ、なんか言いたいことありましたよね。あの、はい。この食は和食はあの温かいものは温かく、冷たいものはあその温度で食べるのが日本の旬という位置づけです。ですのでこの仕掛けは可視化することによってより一層
、えー、東京のエンターテインメント性を高めるものだと思ってます。ありがとうございます。ごめん、ちょっと今質問見てて全然聞いてなかった。すいません。<笑> Sorry, I was so preoccupied with going through the comments and questions, but I think he mentioned that washoku as a culture, the Japanese cuisine, the tradition is to you are supposed to enjoy the hot meals as they are while they are hot. Don't let it chill. It will spoil the flavor and it's so subtle uh, uh, taste and aroma. So, the temperature is very important both for sake and also for the Japanese、uh, culinary tradition. <laughs> Sorry if I misunderstood. Uh, uh,、um, so, next question is for Nishimura san, the glazing specialist. Nishimura san, Nishimura san, are you still there? If Nishimura san is not there, any of the Totoki members should answer this.、Uh, so, on the glazing, is that all natural uh, materials, uh, traditional dyes, or do artists use modern chemicals? Nishimura san, you yaku o mazeru toki, you know, are you on the same way? Are you on the same way? まあ、何か科学的なものも入れるんでしょうか、はい、という質問が来ています。えっ、ー、とどちらも入れますね。あのはいどちらも入れます。で大体はやっぱり自然の原料っていうことですか。そうですね。基礎となるものというかもう大部分はまあ元々山から取れたものですね。あの補助原料でまあ工場で生成されたものを使ったりもします。ありがとうございます。あの何種類ぐらいレシピっていうか組み合わせ、あ、五百っておっしゃってたね。それは色ですか、それともあのコンビネーションですか。えっ、ーえー、とテロップにあった五百っていうのはあの原料の数ですね。レシピはちょっとあの数えきれないです。あはあはあはあ。何万単位ですね。はい。はあ、so the answer is that the majority is actually coming from the mountains and the land. Completely natural and safe, but sometimes the artist prefer to mix and experiment、uh, with some other ingredients. But of course, it's all safe for the human health. But so I would say the majority is coming from the mineral, natural mineral sources. And、uh, the 500 that he mentioned in his video is only the, the rare material that he is able to access. So, the recipe or the formula of actual、uh, glazing combination is like more than 10,000 or some, some hundred thousand. So,、uh, if you'd like to try, maybe、uh, you are welcome to visit his workplace. Okay. The, so, I think、uh, Reiko has. Posted the、uh, link to the survey. So if you are able to access that, please、uh, fill out the survey. And once again, this is a three day webinar supported by the Embassy of Japan. And here is the information that you can see all these、uh, products because I specialize in Minoyaki. And So, kimono and some other cool stuff from Japan, but Minoyaki is my expertise. So, if you are interested, please visit my、uh, homepage and also send any questions or feedback、uh, through this email address, as well as the generic,、uh, general feedback to the webinar through the link that is now posted on the chat box. And last but not least, there is an ongoing exhibition at the JICC, the Japanese Information and Culture Center in downtown DC,、uh, featuring all these Minoyaki and、uh, the Lakaway from Iwate, which is the next session on Wednesday evening. So if you are in DC, please just swing by and take a look and also send your comments、uh, through all these、uh, channels. So, is this if you don't have any burning questions, you can still send it to me directly through this email address or、uh, the, the, the survey link if there is any、uh, comment section. But this is the end of this tonight's session, and I really 
thank everybody who are involved in this production. They really helped me put in together. So uh, thank you once again. And I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry if we were missing out from this. I wanted to add that each one of you who joined tonight. So this meeting would be recorded and probably shared uh, through the uh, embassy's media platform. So thank you once again. Can I close the meeting, Rico? Sorry, if I couldn't. Sorry, if I couldn't cover all of your questions and comment now, we'll have two more sessions to come. Uh, one on Wednesday evening, which we focus on Iwate prefectures, a very precious domestically produced lacquerware, and then on the Friday evening, we'll have a roundtable session where you have more chance to interact with the panelists and artists. So thank you, thank you, thank you, and good night and. Have a good day in those colleagues connected from Japan. Thanks for making the time. <laughs>